All right, what's up guys? Uh, so going to try something a little bit different than what I've been doing in the past. And that is going to be more of a podcast style, but also video. I record my audio separate anyways, so I figured why not hit multiple platforms. And also I wanted to like just kind of switch up how I was doing things in the past with the whole uh, trying to be professional style uh, YouTube videos and acting like I was a product expert. And uh, I kind of prefer the more relaxed, just chill, um, instead of just like trying to give you guys these knowledge drops or school you on products or whatever. It's just more of a casual conversation, relaxed environment, a lot more chill. I just feel like it's, that's better suited to me because I'm not an expert on any of this. I'm sure that comes as a giant shock to you, but yeah, I just, I just like to be able to still do this, still put out content. Like I said, multiple platforms, so I'm filming it, uh, but also just having the podcast thing if people just want to throw it on, listen to it, and hear my stupid voice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a shot and uh, keep rolling with this on like a weekly podcast basis. And as you can see, I'm in a different, uh, I got a different setup here on the go. I'm going to try that too. And I got my computer in front of me. So I can actually just read off what I want to talk about. Like I said, just more relaxed. Because obviously when I do the other videos or when I did the other videos, it was like, I'm not an expert. I'm not, didn't go to school for any of this stuff. I don't have all the information. So I would just research it. I would look it up. And then what you didn't see because of editing, which is an amazing thing, by the way, would be me stopping and like scrolling on my computer and trying to find what I want to tell you. So... Yeah, you get brain farts and whatever else, and I'm still gonna get those, even with the computer in front of me to tell me exactly what I wanna say. It's just way more relaxed, and that suits me better, and hopefully that will come through in my content and kinda just make it easier to watch and listen to, hopefully. So, without any further ado, uh, this is the Here's the Scoop podcast uh, with me, Thomas Jordan. Thomas Jordan. Thomas Jordan. Thomas Jordan, that's my name. And what better way to really dive into this than to talk about creatine, which is like the number one supplement. And for some reason, I've just been waiting. I should have started with that when I started my supplement reviews and all that stuff, but kind of glad I didn't because now's a really important time to talk about creatine with the gyms opening back up and everyone's getting back in there. Um, depending on where you are in the world or if you're listening to this somewhere where you don't have a gym yet or don't have access to your gym yet, then hang on, it will happen. We're getting there slowly. But for me and for many others around me or anyone who's actually probably going to watch or listen to this, we are back in the gym now. And if I'm going to recommend anything to help you dive back in and get those gains back, it's going to be creatine. Uh, so... Plain and simple, creatine is the number one supplement for improving performance in the gym. There is nothing else that works like that. It's been researched uh, the most. It is the most researched supplement that you can buy. You may think it's protein, but it's definitely not. Creatine is actually the number one researched product uh, and the results have been incredibly beneficial. So uh, it's the most effective supplement that you can buy and also, like a majority of the negative and unsafe claims about creatine are actually not supported by any evidence. Um, and I don't know why it has such a bad rep, why people treat it like it's, I don't know, steroids for some reason. Like, I don't know where this stuff comes from or where people get their information or misinformation in this case, but, you know, creatine doesn't affect your hormones it has nothing to do with testosterone or it's non like androgenic it's doesn't affect any of that stuff so women you can take it safely um men same thing it doesn't have these wild horrible side effects or dangers that people 
for some reason think it does and i don't know where that came from i like i said i've done research on this and i've been reading a lot about creatine to kind of refresh myself and be able to talk about it with you guys here today but i don't know where this stuff comes from but it really it's just bizarre because people think it's like not safe or like they're gonna i don't know their kidneys are gonna fail or something like that but i don't know i don't know where it comes from but basically today i want to talk about like what creatine is, how it works, and the different types of creatine. So basically, creatine is produced in your body naturally in your muscle cells. So it's already there and it helps your muscles produce energy during heavy lifting or high intensity exercise. Simple as that. Now, there's a couple factors that affect your body's natural creatine stores. Uh, so that'll be like how much meat you eat, how much you exercise, the amount of muscle mass you have in your body, and your different levels of hormones such as testosterone. Uh, they affect how much creatine you produce and store in your muscle cells. So about 95% uh, of your body's creatine is stored in your muscles. And then the other 5% is actually in your brain kidneys and liver. So when you supplement with creatine, you actually increase your natural stores. So this is important because it's unlike other supplements and my best comparison would be like a testosterone booster. Whereas if you take a testosterone booster and you have already normal levels of testosterone, you're not going to like, it's not going to put you over that natural limit uh you cannot go above that whatever you are like if you have completely normal levels taking a testosterone booster is going to be essentially completely useless you may feel a little bit more horny than usual maybe that might be it but if you have low levels of testosterone and you know you have low levels of testosterone there's usually signs uh to go with that then yes it's beneficial because it can help you bring or help bring you back up to that natural level uh, where you should be now with creatine you can actually boost so this is this is the whole point of me talking about this you can actually take what your body is at naturally and go beyond that by supplementing with creatine that's what makes it so important and um, powerful it also helps your body produce more atp which is adenosine triphosphate and that is a high energy molecule it's often called the body's uh like energy currency so when you have more ATP, your body can perform better during exercise, and that's super important. That's what we're all going for. That's why athletes and weightlifters and whoever, gym goers, supplement with creatine. This is a huge part of it. So how it works, basically, it gives you a boosted workload. So it enables more total work or volume in a single training session. This is why I, I recommend it for getting back in the gym. So during the quarantine slash isolation slash whatever you want to call it, I was completely useless. I could not get into working out at home. I just sat around and played video games, maybe went for a walk or a run outside. Uh, but I was not, you know, I was doing a couple push, like 20 push-ups a day, maybe if I could drag myself to do that. So getting back in the gym was real, it was a real shock to the system and obviously my strength was down my actual like training volume was down in terms of like reps and sets like i fatigued more easily and this is where creatine is such an important supplement for getting back in the gym and why i want to talk about it now and make sure that everyone has the information on it so you can be like hey i'm going to include that in my stack to get back in the gym and get back to where i was and maybe even beyond where you were so it helps with the boosted workload. Uh, it improves cell signaling, um, which basically aids in muscle repair and new muscle growth as well. Also can help with raised anabolic hormones, such as IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor one. And uh, that's a very important hormone because it has growth promoting effects on almost every cell in the body. Now, as soon as I say that, I know what I said at the beginning where this doesn't have it doesn't affect your hormones, but it doesn't affect your hormones in the sense like steroids or anything like that. Basically, this is, it just can help 
raise anabolic hormones so that you produce more well basically just produce more muscle um, help you build more muscle and that is why we're all doing this and why we work out so it's very natural stuff it's not putting anything foreign in your body uh just to clarify uh, also increased cell hydration so it lifts water content within your muscle cells uh, which can cause more cell volumization and that plays a role in muscle growth as well with that being said obviously if you have read about creatine or heard rumors about creatine you've heard of like water retention and some people think like your muscles fill up with water and you look bloated and blah 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 i will dive into that in a minute but that's not quite the same thing but it's connected so lastly reduced protein breakdown so this means you actually increase the total muscle mass um, in your body by reducing uh, muscle waste so your body is using all the protein to repair and rebuild your muscles and that is key that is super important also creatine supplements can also increase phosphocreatine stores in your brain which may improve brain health and prevent neurological disease this isn't studied or uh, proven as much as the other things involving creatine but it's definitely something i read about that i was like okay should worth talking about because that's super interesting and obviously when it comes to preventing neurological disease or improving brain health pretty great um, one thing they did find is that it had benefits um on like memory recall um and like sleep deprivation uh, the effects were a lot less so that's pretty interesting stuff now the different types of creatine and this is where this is probably the most important thing i'm going to talk about for anyone who's not well versed in this world uh, or in the supplement world or just in creatine in general so the classic i call it the og it's creatine monohydrate it's been around for i don't even know how long i probably should have done my research on that but it's been around a long long time and that is the most common type of creatine on the market and is also the form that has been the most scientifically researched and tested by experts um, in many 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 studies this is so this is the creatine that i guess associates most of the negative side effects so that water retention that i spoke of the extracellular water retention uh, which results in that puffy look that is a side effect of creatine monohydrate it's not a side effect of the others and i'm going to get into that in a second creatine standard creatine monohydrate it's still super effective but because it's so i guess basic uh it's also incredibly cheap and affordable which is great uh considering how effective it is honestly at this stage with the other options out there i wouldn't probably recommend going to grab uh, just standard creatine monohydrate uh unless you're on a really tight budget and then you can find it almost anywhere now like costco shoppers um you know your local drugstore your supermarkets anything like that uh they will sell basic creatine monohydrate in some form by some brand and you want they're all going to be the same basically but if you're on a budget that would be okay but there is some negative side effects associated with that form and it is the water retention a bit of a like stomach upset um, digestion problems things like that the next type of creatine that is more relevant or a little bit more new uh, is creatine hydrochloride also referred to as creatine hcl uh, and that is preferred for its good water solubility and the way they make that is basically they attach a hydrochloride group to the creatine to enhance its stability and adding that hydrochloride group lowers the ph of the creatine making it more acidic and uh, it's also believed that it can be absorbed more effectively by the body as well therefore uh, reducing a lot of that stomach upset uh, making it easier on your your system basically last one or maybe not the last one but i'm only going to like touch on the the main three that you'll see or the most often or most popular last one is cree alkaline also called buffered creatine and uh it's a form of creatine that contains a slightly basic powder like bicarbonate uh and that actually makes the ph higher so creatine hydrochloride makes the ph lower uh the buffered creatine the ph is actually higher and uh it creates a slightly basic compound that can reduce the breakdown of creatine in the stomach 
improve its absorption into the muscles. The main thing is with crealkaline or buffered creatine, like one and a half grams is equivalent to about 10 to 15 grams of ordinary creatine monohydrate. So you need a lot less uh, to get the same results, which is great. That is my go-to. Whenever I supplement with creatine, I use a crealkaline or buffered creatine product. And my go-to is actually Purple K by Fusion uh, Bodybuilding. And I actually reached out to them like not that long ago when I said, hey, I want to do a video on creatine. Your stuff is my go-to. Would you mind sending me a sample or, a, you know, whatever so I can talk about it? And sure enough, they did. And that's awesome. So thank you guys so much for that. And I just finished it, actually. Um, I just finished my 30-day run of that. I guess I've been back. Yeah, I've been back in the gym for 30 days now. So that's great. And I cannot tell you how much it helped with getting my strength back, um, getting my muscle mass back, because I was like losing a lot of shape uh, throughout the quarantine and isolation and that definitely helped like and i've actually i'm actually a bit stronger now than i was before the quarantine so that's wicked uh and i definitely you know i give that to creatine so it is super important and i think that everyone should be using it if you're serious about working out or weightlifting or exercise honestly there's not the downsides are, are really, like, I wouldn't say non-existent, but they're, like, it's not nearly as bad as people think. And I wish I understood why it has this bad name or where that came from or what people think is going to happen to them if they take creatine. And they're, like, girls, too, because girls think, like, they shouldn't take creatine and they're going to get, like, muscly or bulky. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. It's not. It's not steroids. It's not anything of the sort it just helps you perform better in the gym helps you repair your muscles and have better workouts and like if you're working out in the first place it's just gonna help that be better so you're getting the same results but better like i don't know i don't understand anyway um one thing i want to talk like touch on is the whole loading phase so with creatine monohydrate, there's the loading phase, and that's basically you bulk up on creatine for a week to increase your muscle stores rapidly and then decrease your daily intake just to maintain high levels. So because creatine, like I said in the beginning, is you can actually go above and beyond your natural levels by supplementing with it, uh, this just does that in a hurry, and then you slowly work your way back down to uh, maintain those high levels, and this just gives you the best results possible. You can... You don't have to do a loading phase. If you just drag it out longer, it'll just take a bit longer to get there. But to get the best results, a loading phase is optimal and recommended for uh, when you're taking like a basic creatine monohydrate with crealkaline uh, or with creatine HCL, you do not need to do a loading phase. So that's good. With the loading phase, it can definitely result in stomach upset and cramps because you are taking in way more than um, what your body's used to. and it just creates a bit of uh, indigestion, stomach upset, and a bit of cramping. But the last thing I'll say about it, for anyone, like anyone, anyone, anyone looking to pack on muscle, sprint faster, uh, recover better, or add some weight to your lifts, creatine is the most effective supplement available. So I don't understand why you wouldn't incorporate it into your daily grind like it doesn't make any sense to me why people have these negative feelings toward it um it just improves exercise performance if you put it like that that's the best way to say it improves exercise performance so when you work out it's gonna be better and that's all i need to say about it why not like women men obviously not kids but women men if you're working out it doesn't matter Definitely take a look at it when you're back into the gym. If you're back in the gym right now, go grab some creatine and I promise you will notice great results. So that's all I have to say about it. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, this is the first podcast, the first video podcast. And um, I'm curious to find out what you guys think of this format. If this is more like your thing or if you prefer I go back to doing the 
standard sit at a desk and wicked cuts with editing and in information blasts, that kind of thing. Obviously, I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to feedback. I will not get my feelings hurt if you tell me that you didn't like this. But if you don't say anything, I'm going to keep doing it. So, you know, let me know what you actually think, how you actually feel about it. Otherwise, um, I'm going to keep doing these weekly podcasts. I'm going to film it. It's going to be available on different platforms. I haven't worked that out yet as this is the first one. Um, but yeah, it's called Here's the Scoop. And each week I'm going to pick something different to talk about. Fitness related. Um, and, you know, sometimes I may branch off into not so heavily fitness related stuff. But uh, we'll see what I come up with. I like having my computer, my notes here in front of me, being able just to talk to you guys in a very natural way and uh, deliver information because I don't have it all up here. Like I said, I'm definitely not an expert. I just love, I love this stuff. This is my passion. This is what I like to do. And uh, being able to, being comfortable enough to share this information with you guys so you don't have to do a bunch of research, then whatever, why not? So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button somewhere there. And uh, if you are listening to this in a podcast form, um, I guess, depending on what it lands on, subscribe, save, add, whatever. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for now. Um, until next time. Peace, 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 peace.